gotta say, it starts with the looks with the SCAR 16S. It looks good. It's impressive, it's different. That's why a lot of guys have bought it over the years. Now if we go back a few years here in TMP, actually all the way back to 2008, anytime this gun came up in conversation tabletop wise, I would say I was pretty much unimpressed with it. Don't expect a tabletop review. It doesn't do anything a good AR-15 doesn't do. I will, by the way, stick with that. It really doesn't. But there is something more, and it was enough for me to overcome my prejudice. I had, yes, I had some when I started testing this gun for me to like it. So if you come to me and ask, hey, should I buy a SCAR 16S? Um, I'll say maybe. Not no, but maybe. That's, that's an improvement of, of where I was for years. Now, I ran into this gun, a buddy of mine, it's his gun, basically thrust it upon me and said, dude, please do a tabletop on this. And I was like, I know some viewers want to see it. I was not stoked about it. And I just, it's work. You know, it's work to make the, the trips out in the desert, do all this range shooting and stuff. Uh, it's fun, but it's work too. And uh, I said, cool, I'll do it. And out I went. Just two outings is all I did with this because I wanted to get the information to you quickly. Well, <laughs> relatively speaking, what are we in our ninth year in the Nut and Fancy Project and you're finally getting a 16S tabletop? Whatevs. Um, as I shot it, I will say I kind of like the gun. Uh, like a lot. I mean, it has such a smooth, and I'll start right there, has such a smooth shooting dynamic. And I did click around on the internet to see what some guys were saying. And some people were complaining about the recoil impulse. I did not, I did not see that at all. Uh, after coming from the Breda ARX 100 to this gun, it's night and day. It was fun to shoot. It was enjoyable. I could have done it all night. It's fast. It recovers quickly. The proprietary muzzle brake works on the SCAR 16S just like it did when I table topped back in, what was it, 2012 or whatever it was. The, the big brother, the 17S, the Scar Heavy. And I will say, and you're going to see footage from both that testing period, the 17S, and then this one as well, 16S, because they're very similar guns, obviously. One is 5.56, one is 7.62. I remain pretty much enamored with the 17S because of what it can do at its weight level. Still, I mean, I look around, and it's still one of the lightest weight. 762 by 51 battle rifles out there. I'm talking about the 17S, and it impresses me. You add in the other attributes that this system has that we're going to hit again with the 16S, and it's a it, it's a pretty squared away system. It's also a pretty expensive system, and some of my past criticism pretty much centered on that. It's like you're going to go out and you're going to spend what 22, 23 at times. It was 2,600 dollars for this gun. The 16S, uh, and I guess we'll just hit value here. Um, I don't know. It just really depends. That's why I say maybe. I wouldn't say a qualified no. Because a lot of guys spend that on their guns all the time. And I'm not talking about high-end custom build guns. I'm talking factory guns, their own builds, AR-15s, all types of guns. They're spending two grand plus every day of the week. For that type of purchaser, that type of consumer of a tactical carbine, I would say put it on your shopping list. If you get a chance, shoot it, you'll probably buy it. Yeah, are you surprised I'm saying that? Because I have been negative about the gun. I, I ain't going to lie. I have. I was just like, don't, that's what I said. Uh, and there's, a, there's some very distinct reasons why I say that it's, it's a really good, if not excellent, tactical carbine. It does have some weirdness to it. Uh, we'll talk about that. A lot of it will echo my 17S review. But we have to kind of hit it again to make it self-contained. Uh, this gun, by the way, has been around a while. It is Mark 16 Mod Zero. I love that nomenclature, as in I don't. It's <laughs> The military nomenclature just cracks me up. It's funny. And then the, a lot of civilian makers will copy it to imbue tacticalness and mil-spec to their own products. Like, well, this is our mod such and such. So I think that's kind of funny. 
uh, I'll just call it the 16S, the 556. It did serve with SOCOM and it was discontinued by SOCOM, which most of y'all know. I don't think they did it on the basis of performance. They didn't say, hey, this gun sucks. That wasn't it. It was basically logistics and common sense. The common sense side of the equation, it finally caught up to them and they said, well, why do we have this gun when it does basically what an M4 does? Now, I'm sure, and I didn't look around for this, but I'm sure there's all types of online debates between, you know, dudes that will say, well, the M4's inferior to the, the SCAR-16 <coughs> or whatever, the Mark-16. <coughs> it's a piston-driven gun. Technically a gas tap at short stroke system like an M1 carbine, kind of, uh, versus a DI gun. And But I kind of think now, it's so funny, I always defended the dis the direct gas impingement system here in the Nut and Fancy Project. I have a whole video out on it. It's been out for eons. And it's funny, to, again, like I've said in some recent reviews, that it, the pendulum swung back to supporting a DI system. And people go, well, you know, really, it's it's actually pretty good. It's extremely accurate. It's very simple. Uh, I've always said if you're going to cut off a barrel super short, i.e. SBR it, or you're going to run a suppressor, a can, I kind of like a piston system. And the SCAR would qualify for both of those uses. So getting back to the question, should I get a SCAR 16S, uh, we're not really talking SBR, but are you going to run a can on it? Eh, it'll probably run pretty clean for you. Uh, efficiently. Adjustable gas system up here, so you can adjust it as needed. Uh, but SOCOM discontinuing it, I think, was a, a good decision, a wise decision. Uh, you know, there's some trickling out there, and certain groups can access them when and if they want. Maybe. It, let's just say in a make-believe world, uh, I myself was an operator in the SOCOM, SOCOM arena. You know what I would do, and I'm, I'm being totally honest with you guys, is I would kind of run my own tests. So I would take the carbines they allow me to have, and I would go out swimming with them. I'd go out running with them. And if any one of them ever jammed on me, that's the one I would not take into combat. I know, it sounds kooky because so much testing is done, but I think a lot of us are that way. If a gun personally fails on us, then we're like, oh, it's out. And I, I'm kind of that way too. Uh, and I say that in defense of the 16S. I think it is extremely reliable. It had no jams, no problems whatsoever in the rounds that I shot out of it. Granted, it wasn't a lengthy course of fire. I've always maintained the best test is probably a commercial shooting range, which, by the way, report very highly on the scars. They say that the bolts will just run and run, the barrels will last and last. Very, very few breakages, from what I know, at commercial shooting ranges, and also tactical courses, courses of fire, where a lot of rounds are being sent down range. The rest of us, granted, I'm a tester, so I'm a kind of an anomaly, but the rest a lot of people they just don't have the money to do it not only that they don't have a place to shoot and this is just an aside it's kind of funny and let's talk philosophy of use let's say uh recreational would it be fun to go out and shoot a 16s at your bench you know at your local range yeah kind of uh i mean i do like bench shooting for accuracy that's fun but generally when i do that i like a lever action or a bolt action gun and it's kind of a whole different way of shooting this is kind of a lamborghini uh, it's a dumb example, but for me to have fun with a tactical carbine, I want to go run and gun with it. I want to use the gun, the weapon, as it was designed to be used. And in that exercise, I'll find out about it. And I'll find out about reliability, accuracy, ergonomic interface with myself, and stuff, stupid stuff like that. Um, yeah, you could do it. But if we're talking philosophy of use, uh, one thing you would get by doing that is attention. So if you run up with a 17S, 16S, guys are going to be going, oh, hey, cool. You know, it's a kind of a conversation starter. You don't see them everywhere. They are still expensive and relatively rare. If that's what you like, a second cool thing, so attention getting, whether you're posting online or you're in person, and I'm not going to actually fault that. I mean, we all do things that make, make us smile. Maybe it's a motorcycle, a car a truck modification, a gun modification, and it's just cool. And you know, guys like it when other guys uh, who are interested in that thing too go, hey, let's talk about that. It's kind of fun, right? I get it, man, I, I hear you all the way. Uh, other philosophies of use apply. Defensive carbon, WROL carbine. Uh, hunting, nah, not in this caliber. 17S, yeah, 
definitely not in this one. I wouldn't do it. I mean, hog hunting, absolutely be great. And all the other stuff we've talked about. We'll just leave it at that because I, I want this video to be a little bit shorter. Uh, I said in the 17S review that one of the things I really love about FN products, and it, it goes pretty much across the line, is their military experience It can be seen in every product they make. It's like, and I won't use the term mil spec because it's just the way FN uh, H just does things, is, is everything's just done as as good as they can. For instance, the barrel is cold hammer, cold hammer forged. It'll do something like 16,000 rounds, and I'm ballparking that before it wears out. I personally would never test that, but you know, if you fall into the category that we talked about earlier, maybe, maybe you would. One to seven twist, super high quality barrel. No, they're not the only ones doing it. There's ARs I put on this table that will meet those same quality standards, but everything is just kind of there are some gaps I want to show you those that you just kind of go what the heck what were they thinking uh, proprietary muzzle brake I talked about that already I would not spin that off on a 16s and I said on the 17s I'd probably leave it on as well it does work it mitigates muzzle rise I found I'm not the end all expert of saying hey you know my follow-up shops were this much quicker and I'm running a timer I don't care and I think it's kind of ridiculous unless the guy's a super competitor, right, running the gun, uh, then I would care. If I can save a microsecond here, a microsecond there, then I'm looking for competitive advantage, then I'll buy accessories accordingly. But uh, again, like I've talked about here forever, if your marksmanship fundamentals, if you're just your overall skill level is sucky, uh, don't expect any device, any trickery you're doing to your gun to help you out at all in your course of fire. Duh. Uh, the barrel is kind of thin. We see, saw that in the 17S. It's that way here, uh, not exactly free-floated. Um, I say that, and I, I give that wine, because a way, I don't like when manufacturers lose weight by thinning the barrel out, and generally that's what you're going to see. Someone's going to be bragging about how lightweight this tactical carbine is, whether it's an AR, in this case 16S, and it is lightweight. I mean, as configured, everything you see, with the Leopold scope, PMAG, and this VG is from my buddy. I didn't put that on. He's running the stock hand grip, no sling, nine pounds, five ounces. That's reasonable. And and you know, naked, what is it? Oh lighter. It's like twelve ounces. That's just like seven pounds, like four ounces. I think. Something like that. That's pretty light, but credit the thinner barrel, partially, and then you have you know, basically a plastic lower aluminum chassis up top. Basically a modular gun. But I'm happy with the quality of materials in most cases. Pick rail on the side, pick rail on the bottom, just like we saw before. Folding backup sights included, they should be at this price level. I do believe they take an M16 post, AR post there. You can change those out. I did not shoot the irons off this gun. I just scoped it and I told my buddies, like, hey, I'm going to mar your gun up a little bit because I'm going to throw a amount on. He's like, yeah, rock on, dude. Whatever. <laughs> um, I like, again, going back to Philosophy View, second cool, I do like <laughs> the multi-colorations of the 16S. 17S had it too. I like it. You know, anodizing is always going to be a different coloration than the bottom because it can't match them. Technology currently, and I've talked to guys that do it, like Tactical Solutions up in Idaho. They go, yeah, we try, and every batch turns out a little bit different. So I, that's not intentional by the manufacturer. What results is just kind of a hodgepodge of tans, which makes the gun look kind of technical, if you ask me. I mean, look how many different tans you got. You got that tan, that tan. With the PMAG, that's a different tan. That's a different shade. The stock is a different shade. You know, that's kind of cool. I, I'll tell you who loves it. It's my son, Tactical Doodle. He loves it when it's kind of the hodgepodge thing. It kind of, kind of reminds him of like a Boba Fett thing going on. So I get it. I think it's cool. Um, modular, we talked about that. We're talking about SAWC design and ergos. It's pretty. It's a pretty good ambi gun as well. So you can swap the charging handle over, which is reciprocating. By the way, I was reminded of that when I shot it on the barricade, and it's like schwack, schwack, schwack against wood. I'm like, oh geez, yes, yeah, reciprocating. Um, I I wouldn't say that's a showstopper. I'll just address that right now. Uh, given a choice, I maybe prefer non-reciprocating, 
but by a slight margin. I say maybe because we shoot AKs, we shoot Mini 14s. Like I've said in the years past, they're reciprocating. We've adapted to them. And it's nice kind of having direct control of your bolt group. And, I mean, this is connected to your bolt group. There's no AR, you know, M16, M4 style interface. It's just right here. So it's simple. I, and that's good. And you can swap it over. I think a lot of righties are running this on the left or on the right side for barricade shooting especially and I think that would be a good choice and I don't mind coming off you know with my offhand charging on this side again that would be just like an AK or a Mini 14 for me and I think a lot of guys are doing that consistency of training you can swap the safety catch over the magazine is ambi I believe I'm talking the magazine catch and then we talked about the bolt so it's pretty ambidextrous for our lefty friends cool magwell uh, we'll just take a quick super peek in there standard uh, I think it wears well too uh, there is one I guess we'll go there now and this is what I was alluding to earlier one glaring reliability reliability thing that was reported I think from the SOCOM community a few civilian users have reported and that is the plastic stock both the cheek piece which is raisable like that and by the way, it is raisable. In the 17S, I criticized it because you can get a schwack into your cheek with the recoil of a basically a 308. Uh, 16S, I didn't notice that at all. It's too soft shooting. Uh, it is adjustable, so if you need you have higher optics, you could use it. But I think this was breaking off, and then the plastic stock catch. The good news is, is uh, there is an aluminum one. I think it's made by Tango Down. Uh, you could adapt it and put it on. There it is, folded. The mechanism itself, I'm talking the stock here, uh, albeit it is plastic right here, which is sucky, it's pretty solid. There's no movement as it comes from the factory. I like it. Uh, would I like it if it's metal? Uh, I'm talking from the factory. Let me say big maybe, because a lot of times people say, well, it needs to be metal, it needs to be steel, and they just forget about SAWC. Next thing you know, you have an AR-15 weighing 10 and a half pounds. Why? Because they demanded metal. Eh, not if I own this gun, I wouldn't. I would probably not immediately swap it out. I would just run it because you really have to realistically ask yourself how many times you're going to shoot it, how many times you're going to actuate it. So calm guys going in and out of armored vehicles, helicopters, hiking around, banging constantly, stowing and unstowing it. That's a lot of wear and tear. I have no doubt in my mind they had problems with it. Uh, adjustable stock too, even in its fully extended position. It, it, it's kind of a short length of pull. You know, I think the trend, the tactical trend now, it's so funny how they come and go, is short lengths, short lengths of pull are good. People like them. Uh, I usually like it, you know, come out a little bit longer. Um, rubber butt pad here. You got sling attachment points here and there. They are aluminum, so if you're running steel there, I think they're aluminum. Yep, they are. Probably 7000 series, that 7001 aluminum. They're going to wear and tear. Um, my buddy here has run it a little bit, and you can see there's other ways to mitigate that. You know, maybe put a cable system in there, and that's what uh, another friend of mine who has a 17S did. How about the trigger pull? There are, and we're kind of talking aftermarket stuff, there are trigger kits for it. Timney makes one, Geisley makes one, there might be some others. And I, when I tested that 17S, it did have a Geisley in it. I really, really liked it. It was pretty much excellent. Let me make sure this is racked all the way. I haven't even pulled this yet, so I don't know. But when I was shooting it, I wasn't finding it obnoxious. So 7.6. Do it again here. Eight eight, we'll call it eight pounds. You know, shoot it, see what you think. I, I'm a trigger snob. I've told you that like a bazillion times. Mm, if if I had this gun, I didn't find it obnoxious, but if I owned this gun, I I would probably put a trigger a trigger pack in it. I I, I would. I just like it. I would definitely swap that out. The A2 pistol grip, it works. It's okay. Um, I just there's so many other good ones out now. I mean, take your pick. They're just a bazillion them out there. Uh, no winter trigger guard here if you're shooting in fat gloves it might be a an issue with you it does kind of have a tall bolt group to it the 16s which uh is good and bad i i mean it's it's bad i guess because you're kind of going to be stuck i think with the iron sights that come with it uh but that's not a horrible thing because like i said i think they're pretty good 
Um, and I like running my optics super low, so I have it in a mount right now, a single piece mount that's going as low as I can. Um, but it's different. It's different and higher than an Air AR-15 M4 variety. And again, the, the adjustable cheek piece is pretty much made mandated by that. SAWC uh, design ergos. By the way, this is a really nice Leopold scope. I love it. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it is. Two and a half by eight illuminated. And by the way, the illuminated function totally failed on me. Good job, Leopold. Uh, I'll probably send it back, get him, get it fixed. Uh, it's common, actually, on Leopold's. I think a lot of people uh, criticize them. They have really good glass. I love the reticle in it. Uh, the value is okay. And the weight is actually pretty excellent for what it is. It's a great all-around, I call it mid-range option, glass option. I think it fits this, this 16S eloquently. Ooh, big word, nothing. I know. I know. Uh, SAWC Designer Ergos. I think I cover most of the stuff. We talked about the adjustable gas system. Uh, it's it's a modular system. You have, have the stock, the receiver, bolt carrier, trigger module, and magazine. And I guess I'll cover field strip right here. Um, another reason I really like this gun is the field strip. Uh, it's simple. It's easy. It, it's intuitive. Uh... Magazine out, we rack for habit pattern, safe direction, and then we're going to take off the lower. Just kind of work it out like that. And then we'll slide this rear stock portion off. Then we slide our bolt, bring this catch, twist this right here. I've only done it like one other time. There it is. It's inset. That's why I couldn't see it. Usually these days, I don't spend time doing this. I'll do with this, just for the heck of it. Bring your bolt back. Charging handle comes out. Again, this is where we'd swap to the right side if we wanted. And here's your bolt carrier group. And this is what I was talking about, the quality of FN. I mean, look at that. The CNC milling. No, it's not the only company that does it. It's got a six lug bolt, bolt there. You can see the extractor. It's nice. I mean, it's just quality. Look inside here. This part right here, super light. There, the barrel is skinny again, but you save a lot of weight that way. That's your field strip. I mean, it's super simple. Sometimes it'll catch up right there, and so I just kind of turn upside down and shake it. Then we'll put our charging handle back in. It can only go in one way, so don't worry about screwing it up. Our recoil spring. This is... You can see how it's shaped right there, and you'll just match it right here. Twist. And make sure I have that right. I think I do. Yep. Put our stock back on. It's a cool system, don't you think? I mean, just breaking it down, it's just ultra cool. Uh, it's just cool. And now an AR, is, it's so functional. I, I'm a big fan of the AR-15. You guys know that. The whole system I've been talking about ever since I started TMP. But this is different, and there's a lot of guns, tactical carbines, that I brought to the table that I don't think are easy to take down. They're kind of weird. Uh, the kel SU-16 comes to mind. The ARX-100 was actually, if I remember, not too bad. This one's just so easy. I mean, that's field strip. Done. Done. Simple. Great job. I love it. Okay, my enthusiasm on the 16S is going to get amped up a little bit as we run into accuracy. If you want to impress me, and I'm just talking me, um, be an accurate rifle, especially if you're in this price range. I'll say 2000 or above. Um, be accurate. You know, I just reviewed the Knight's Armament, Armament uh, AR, and I, I wasn't impressed with its accuracy. It was like 2 to 3 MOA. Uh, you know, then the ex excuse cones come out. Well... You know, it's not designed to be super accurate as a tactical carbine. I'm like, come on, man. Are you kidding me? I'm going to throw this on scale while I'm blabbering. I'm like, if it's it's not hard to make it accurate. I mean, there's so many AR manufacturers that are doing it. Like I said, about 9.5. I've got a GI mag in there now. So, accuracy of this one. Here it comes. I'm going to start you off by uh, reminding you what perhaps the price range should perform at. This is a... A Daniel Defense V11 AR, and it shot well 
Uh, not maybe right there. Black Hills, Tac A. That's a great group. Tacticalammunition.com. Go buy a case of ammunition from them. They support us. That's a good group. And then let's look at what the FN did. Now, this is in the desert off a polymer table. Hornady 55 grain. I wasn't super impressed with. Tac A, that same ammo, 77. It was pretty good. That one flyer, I was like, where'd that come from? But remember, it's on a polymer table actual shooting conditions i was very impressed with this group that's a five round group out of the fn 16s that's moa right there very impressed with this group maybe not so much that it didn't like that 55 grain load okay i'm gonna go faster here this is 55 grain tack a eh, good group there really good group just over moa there and this is 55 grain ball Less impressive there. Tac A here. Gold medal match. I was hoping for basically in a square there. Oh, there it is. It happened. Man, there's some human factors here and there. You know, maybe my trigger press was a little bit off. My breathing was a little bit off. That's easily MOA out of that gun. And that's what I'm calling this. This is a one MOA tactical carving. Look at this. Another Tac A group. 77 grain. Holy cow, that's excellent. And that's excellent. So uh, the accuracy out of this gun, just like we saw out of the 17S, is impressive. It's impressive. So you're going to pay a lot for this gun. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there's no free ride, but you're getting a lot of gun, and you're getting one that's superbly accurate. If that's important to you, I think it should be. Uh, here's one reason why. Because guys are not going to go to combat. Most civilians that own this will never shoot it to defend their lives. They're going to be recreating with it and playing with it. It's a toy. Truth dart. It, it, they're going to go out running and gunning if they're lucky, if they have a place to do it. And they'll be shooting groups at the range. And an accurate gun will make them excited. A uh, track record, I said, phenomenal. I think it has been, except for the, some breakages of components. But as far as the innards go... The barrel life, I think the accuracy and the, the construction of the bolt group, I think there's no questions about it at all. There has been some people talking about it breaking optics, that because it has such bolt mass, it going back and forth, kind of has a re, uh, an air gun style. And I don't know a lot about this. I'm just throwing it out here for your consideration. Um, kind of an, a double recoil snap to it. The 16S and the 17S. I did run the 17S a lot. I didn't really see optics problems with it other than my light going out. But I think that was doing that anyhow. But it's just, I don't know, whatever. It's something to keep in, in mind. Uh, we ran the 17S a lot in Red Skies back in 2012. Firepower, AR standard, which is excellent. Enough said about that. Accessories. A lot of dudes are putting on the extended rail. And that's by Primary Weapon Systems, SRX rail. It's about 190 bucks, but it adds like 8 ounces to your gun. That's half a pound, guys, at the worst possible area up front. Now, I get that people may not want, want, want to run a VG. They want to have that far forward way of grasping the gun. I get it. Um, sometimes I do that. Usually I don't. And I don't think you should necessarily say, well, that's how I have to shoot my gun. You know, that's how I have to shoot my my rifle, that I have to hold it far forward. If you absolutely positively have to do that and you shoot well doing it that way, then maybe you'd look into adding an extended rail. But anytime you're putting more weight to what is a lightweight weapon system, you need to know why and is it worth it. And it may be an AR-15, your own build, or a super quality one. There's bazillions out there. Uh, factory bought would be better for you. Uh, I would, if I'm adding a rail, I need to ask myself, is this gun right for me? And your money could probably be spent somewhere else. I hear that rail is kind of hard to install because you have to uh, heat up and take the screws off of the 16 s kind of a hassle. Uh, other upgrades, uh, Tango down stock latch. I talked about that. There's charging handle upgrades by multiple companies. I think High Desert Dog makes one, uh, and some others. Triggers we talked about. A non-reciprocating charging handle option you can have. A lot of the same things you can do to a 17S, you can do to a 16S. Yeah, I, are there some other things out there I don't know about? Probably. You know, there's a stock adapter by Veltor that if you don't like this stock, you can get rid of it. Again, I'd ask you why. 
you know, if you're putting an AR stock on your 16S, uh, why don't you just get an AR? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I think ergonomically I could totally live with a stock and I think it will function fi fine for 99% of the users out there. Hardcore users, maybe you need to do some upgrades. I'm just saying. Uh, value, I already said that. It's going to be, you know, 22 to 26. You know, I jumped in online, look what prices are for new ones, and that's where they are. Uh, on the showroom floor, I saw one that was more, and I, and it's just sitting there. No one's buying it. Uh, why? It doesn't do anything an AR can't. You know, so it's cool looking. It's different. It looks great. You know, getting back to that video game thing I've talked about in other reviews. Some guys see it on the video game. They're like, that is sick looking. I want one. Valid. Second cool. As long as you don't go rolling around saying it's the best gun in the world because you spent your money on it. You know, we'll let you fly with it. It's cool. Um, if you were to ask me, hey, nothing, what would you rather have? Uh, and I'm just going to list a few here. A Beretta Air X100. An FN FS2000. I'm not going to put pictures of all these in. I'll throw a couple in. H&K MR556. By the way, that's a $3,300 gun last time I checked. 8.6 pounds with a freaking quad rail, a la 2007. What ofs. Knight's Armament, SR-15, uh, what's that new one, CZ, Bren 805 pistol, SBR, Sig 5.56 variety, whatever you want. They have an XI pistol out, $1,500. Which one would you want? Oh, yeah, let me throw my own in. Uh, my own build SBR. Not SB, but SP is in Papa. SPR. Um, my own SPR would go to the top of that list. Because it's lightweight, it's an 18-inch barrel, mid-length gas system, super light. It's actually as light, actually it's lighter than this gun, even with glass, if, I, if I'm remembering right. Super accurate, easily MOA. Occasionally it'll exceed MOA, depending on the ammunition and the barrel I've used on the build. Uh, they're just a can-do everything gun. For me, it's perfect. And then if I were to rank order those other ones, oh, I forgot to say uh, IWI Tavor. Uh, I'd probably go... Super quick, don't hold me to it. I'd probably go Tavor after this one. I gave myself some options I'm really not excited about. I don't like the HK 516 variant 556. And that's it. I wouldn't get a Beretta ARX. I wouldn't get the FS2000, the brand. Or maybe a SIG. SIG makes some pretty cool 556 variants. That would probably go number three. There you go. So, would I buy a Scar 16S? That's ultimately where we're going to end the review right here um, maybe maybe I would I mean to summarize it looks very cool it has all types of second kind of cool it's been used in a lot of movies I didn't go over that for time it's been used in several video games young folks know about it um, but more than that it is a true weapon system that's proven it does have some quirks we've discussed those I may have forgot this or that but I think I got the crux down high quality material, CHF barrel. It's extremely reliable, extremely accurate. Uh, my main concerns would be, uh, if I do hold far forward, it has a short rail, so I'll probably run a BG, but I, I live with BGs in this vicinity on my weapons all the time. So I like the gun. The real criticism, I think, is the money for a plastic and aluminum rifle. $2,300. Only you can decide if it's worth it. I'll tell you this, the owner of this one says he's never selling it. He And this is like the fifth guy I've met that has either a 17 or a 16 and the dudes don't want to get rid of it. And I, after shooting it and putting a lot of rounds through it, I get it. It is an excellent weapon system, just expensive. See you later. Really nice shooting impulse. I love the shooting impulse of the scars. They're just so smooth. They're crisp, super crisp. It just has a real nice shooting dynamic. I could use a Geisley trigger in it for sure. See how we did. I bet you this is accurate. It feels accurate to me. Good accuracy. Wow, that's really good. 
That's 55 grain FMJ. Wow, that's cool. A Star 16. First shot. Yeah, it's accurate. Excellent. All right.